Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of All Things IDA. In today's episode, we're going to talk about export address table hooking. In past episodes, we spoke about regular hooking using detours. This is a bit of an invasive hooking because it patches the code section and so on, introduces jumps, so it is very detectable. There are other kinds of hooks that are less detectable, and one of them is export address table hooking. In other episodes, we're going to talk about import address table hooking as well. But for this time, we're just going to focus on the export address table. We already spoke about how the exports work and so on. And so hopefully in this video, we will be able to easily understand how to hook via export address table. So let's get started. So here I have a test program and I made a very simple EAT hooking library. We're not necessarily going to go into the details. I want to show you the source code just so that we can really see how things look in memory using IDA. So here I'm hooking message box via EAT hooking. So when we say EAT hooking, we're going over the export address table of the module and replacing the exported entries address. So whenever somebody wants to resolve message box, the whole process of resolving the address goes through the export directory and walks through all the functions and so on. We're going to that functions entry in the export directory of user32 and we're gonna patch the implementation pointer with another pointer. So here I'm defining a message box hook and also for kernel32 I'm hooking three functions create file w, read file and close handle. Now the implementations are really simple so here what I'm doing the way this hooking works is just say let's capture read file as we imported it. So here read file really is from the import. So the relationship between between import and export, we have a program that has an import table. Import table requires talking to the export of whatever we're importing from. So what we're doing here, this program is taking the original read file pointer from its own import table, which have been resolved through going through the exports of the module and filling in the pointer. So when the program runs at the global scope, we get that pointer to the original EAT or the original resolution of read file. And then through the hooking library, we replace the pointer with another implementation of read file. So we call the original one and then we display some messages. Same story for other hooks. You will notice this same principle looks like as if we're using detours, but we're not really putting hard jumps. I'll show you the side effects in IDA in a second. Same story, we're hooking create file, hooking message box, and so on. So now let me run this program and show you the side effects. So let's first load the program in IDA. I did load it in IDA. I have PDBs. Just gonna run this program with this pause argument that will pause the program at critical points. So let's run it. And here I have the menu from the program. So this program just lets me test different EAT hook methods. What I'm going to do is simply use this method here. So what this method does, it hooks kernel32, hooks user32, and then it will pause. Once we pause, I will simply look at the side effects of such hooks and show you how it looks. So here it's running, let's press three. And when it hooks, it loads another library. So it loads some other library here, injected DLL, doesn't have anything fancy. This DLL, all it does is export a test method just to show you that if we hook the EAT and then load the DLL, that DLL will have to resolve its imports. And when it resolves its import, it has to go through the export directory of other modules. And it should have whatever hooked dependencies, they should be returned as the hooked version. So here in this method, Method from the DLL which we're gonna load so here in the local hooks we're gonna load that DLL and resolve that method in the DLL just for testing purposes and what I'm testing for here in this program is to check that if we get the module handle of kernel 32 and user 32 and try to reference the hooked methods like a message box a create file they should not point to user 32 create file should not point to kernel 32 because we redirected the resolution from the module itself to the hook trampoline and we will see the side effects. So once this one says it hooked, now what we can do is we can look for example for the message box and see how it looks in the export directory of user32. So I'm gonna load the previous scripts we have. So for example, the list exports. Let's take the list exports here 
and use it as a snippet. And all this does, we have used that script before, we give it a base, image base, and it will simply display the export directory of a given image. So here it is doing it just for one module. Instead, what we can do, we can use idautils.modules to enumerate the modules. We also have done this before. So let's do that here. So for example, for module in idautils.modules. Now we got all the modules. Let's just ignore the errors for now. And let's just pass module instead. And here, let's just pass the module and extract the base from the module. So module.base. Basically enumerating all the exports where they're uh, implemented instead of just the main module. So let's just run this one and see the output. So what do we expect? We expect it goes over every single module here in the modules list and it will go to the image base, parse the export directory and display the exports as we've done in previous videos. So let's run it. Here it's enumerating everything and when it's finished we will have all the export directories of all the loaded modules parsed and available for us. So since we have and we know that message box A, create file, read file and so on are hooked, let's just search in the output here for message box. So here, this is message box. Message box, if we scroll up to the beginning, we'll see it's basically coming from user32. It's uh, eventually gonna tell us uh, it's coming from user32 and so on. And look at this, it's a bit odd. So message box A, look at the addresses here. We can clearly see as we work the export director of user32, this message box A in the table, in the export table, export directory basically, this here is the pointer with the implementation of message box. Similar address, but way off. And that is an indication that the implementation of an exported function is not in our module. So let's follow the implementation. That's how when the user will call get proc address on user 32's message box A, that's the pointer they receive, this one here. If I follow it, it will take me, let's pause first, it will take me to the actual trampoline. Message box, follow it, and here we have this one, make code, and look, we have a trampoline, we have a jump to something just next to it, that really resolves to the full implementation. And the full implementation is called EAT hook message box, let's follow it and uh, decompile. This is basically the message box hook. So if anybody wants to call message box via the point pointer retrieved either through the import table or through calling get proc address, they will receive this pointer. That's the implementation. But on the other hand, unlike using hard hooks like detours, if we go to user 32 message box A, if you notice here, if we have detection softwares, EDRs and so on, they will not detect necessarily that message box is hooked. So here we don't have a jump. We don't have anyone that intercepts message box. The only way message box will be intercepted is if someone calls get proc address after the fact after we hooked so message box is intact user 32 is intact but whoever wants to use message box they're gonna go to the hook and that's gonna be the implementation if we unhook the EAT and somebody get proc address again they will get back the original implementation so this is for message box you see this is the implementation let's take a look at message beep for example you see message beep regular implementation in user 32 but a message box goes to the trampoline and a debug segment and temporary segment which will help transition to the actual hook implementation in our uh, test program in the exe and eventually here it will call the old message box that we saved at loading time of the exe before the hook so this should be really pointing to the actual message box so eat hooks are local only to whoever comes in later Later, after the fact resolves procedure address. If before the hook DLLs and EXEs have their imports wanting some dependency, before the EAT hooks they'll get the proper one. After the EAT hooks they will get the hooked resolution. Before we run the script to detect hooks in IDA, I want to show you again and explain one more time on a higher level. So here we have user 32 hooks for example. Here I have in the table just message box. So we're hooking message box only and then before running this code message box in our import table resolves to the actual message box that was at start time before the hook then we hook the EAT of user32 so we're really patching export directory of user32 
but this will not affect all the already resolved resolutions. One of them is whoever called get proc address before the hook, and also whoever went through the operating system loader import resolution. Behind the scenes, the operating system loader will also do get proc address to get those. And now after we patch the export directory, what we do here in my test program, I call get proc address one more time, because if I didn't, I will still have the original implementation. The hook will not go through. So keep that in mind. EAT hooks really, if you want to make use of them, you have to do them early on. We'll talk about import hooks as well and see how this whole thing can play together, import and export hooks. So let's say the program run and we missed our chance. All the imports have been resolved via walking the export directory and they got the proper non-patched export address table entries. Then in that case, the resolution is already in the import of the said program. So we'll have to use import address table hooking to patch after the fact. But that's why now here I'm doing get proc address one more time to go through the export directory of user 32 and get the hooked address. So we get the hooked message box and then I'm calling message box with whatever pointer I received. Little do I know that the pointer I'm receiving is redirected. The message box have been redirected. So those two calls will go through the hook and then we unhook, we restore the original implementation pointer in the export directory. When we do that, if we re-resolve message box, we really get the actual implementation of message box. So let's now detect the hooks. So at this state in my program, I use this test here, which the first thing I do is simply hook all the user 32 and current 32 functions in the table that we defined. So we should expect four total hooked EATs. So what we're going to do, the logic here is simple for every module. So here in the modules, if we go to user 32, for example, user 32 has the base and the size and so we really have start address and end address. The logic for detecting EAT hooks in a given running program is simple. We're going to walk every DLL, every function that's exported. So we already have that logic in the script. So we already have list exports. But in addition, we're going to look at the pointer implementation. Where is the function implementation? So here in our script, we already have everything we need. We have the funky EA. This is where the implementation is. That's how we print stuff. We're gonna check if the function EA lies within the module boundaries. So if it's not in the module boundaries, then potentially we have a hook. So here, if we go back and search for message box, notice that it's definitely not in user 32, unlike other surrounding functions like message box A, message beep, and so on. So let's change our script a bit more. So we had the script go for all modules. Now I'm gonna change it to not print anything unless the condition is met. So here, let's also make module n the equal base plus module dot size. That will help us do the check for the boundaries. Now, I don't care about forwards, so we're gonna detect the forwarded stuff like I explained in the previous video and skip it. And uh, what is left is either hooked by ordinal or hooked by name. So these two cases here. And now we're only gonna print if they are in, uh, so this is here forwarding. So here, skip forwarded functions because as we said forwarded implementation points within the export directory now here we have a regular implementation but we don't know really where it's going to resolve to so let's do uh, this one so here what we're going to do is say check if outside module itself so here if the function ea is in the range we would say this is good because that's normal so it's like the majority of our case i did take the banner for the dll so what i'm going to do is display it one time so if at least one function is hooked we're gonna display the DLL information. So here if, let's just say DLL string and just empty it out so the next time we don't display anything for this DLL. This should be informative enough. I'm also gonna display the index in the entries table and the number of functions which is basically it's gonna be working in address of functions as we've done before. So here I'm just gonna display i which is the index in that table. So here let's call it index equals i. This will be 
helpful as well as we inspect things manually. Hopefully, if we run this one, we should get nice information about four hooked methods and two different DLLs. Let's run it and look at this. Using our heuristic, we worked every DLL and said, okay, so it seems at the address of functions table at index 137, looks like somebody redirected close handles RVA to outside the module to a new hook implementation. Indeed, if we follow this one, goes to a debug segment. Follow the debug segment, it is a jump to the implementation. So now that we have the export address table with four hooks in total for those ELLs, anybody that wants to resolve will get those addresses. Therefore, they'll be redirected to a hook. So here, here, and here. Now, let me display some more information. Let's display here the base and and I will show you one more time so here let's say 137 206 okay so let's go to the address of functions I'm gonna look at the entry 137 and we're gonna show you that really it stands out and this is really the logic we're doing so address of functions remember it's a D word it's RVA within the base of the DLL in question so the, the base of current 32 let's display this RVA with respect to current 32 this base as a 64 bit offset and this is the full resolution and this is a forwarding the first entry is a forwarder let's make an array of one six three four entries one element and display and this is in decimal and this should be showing us all the functions now if we scroll to index 137 we will see that really it stands out so here for example look close handle at 137 is odd look at other implementation this one still goes to kernel 32 this one still goes to kernel 32 the hooked ones like 137 is going to debug segment part of the hooking library which will help us transition to the actual hook implementation which happens to be in the exe itself same story if we go to the table at index 206 we're gonna see the same artifact indication of hooks basically so here is there another hook? Same story if we go to user32, address of functions, the same story we will see at index 650 that message box is not pointing correctly. So to recap really what we did is simply repurpose our export directory walking example, just how to enumerate and walk the export directory. And we added a simple heuristic. If the function pointer is not within the module, we assume that this is a EAT hook. Now, of course, if a malicious program wants to avoid this heuristic, all they have to do is redirect to some gap within the image base, patch the trampoline code as needed, and our heuristic will no longer find it. Okay, that's it for today. So as you can see, we used our knowledge about parsing the export directory practically in order to detect EAT hooks in running processes or even a crash dump of a running process. Alright, I'll see you next time. Thank you.